Hey everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Jack, otherwise known as the Avid Assistant. And uh, in this video, I'm just going to be taking a look at different ways you can have your scene bins laid out in Avid. Now, as I'm sure you know, there is lots of different ways that you can do this. It's one of my favorite things about Avid Media Composer is how manual it is, how much control we have over everything and the way we can customize and change. And the way that an editor likes to have their scene bin laid out is usually one of the first things that an assistant will find out about them because it's what you'll be preparing when you pre prepare the rushes. So it's usually something that I've done differently and more unique on each and individual job that I've worked for. Well, at least every editor that I've worked for. Some people really like um, frame view and being able to see all the thumbnails. Some people just want uh, all the text and data and some people like a mixture. It is just whatever works for you. So none of the examples shown in this video are going to be the right or the wrong way, as I'm sure you already know. But what I'm going to do is go through four different uh, bin layouts, uh, four your rushes, and then I'm going to show you my preferred way of how I like to have a bin laid out when I'm cutting. Um, some will be similar, some will be completely different. I hope you find something interesting, I hope, hope maybe there's some suggestions in here for you. Um, but without further ado, let's dive right into the first one. And the bin layout that we're going to start with is probably one of the most common that I deal with, uh, frame view. So let's jump in and take a look at that. Right, so this one I'm dubbing frames and groups um, for obvious reasons. And now you may have noticed, even though we're talking about frame view, that I'm still in the text view here. And that's just because I want to highlight some of the work that I've done previously before I got to the scene bin. Now, a lot of this work that I'm talking about is to do with metadata. So I'll add a bunch of custom columns uh, to input this metadata for tracking. And one of the most important ones to do is just called AE notes, so assistant notes. And this is where I'll notate things like false takes, part takes, focus issues, any of this kind of stuff, stuff that you should catch while you're syncing. And this is a good place to note it down so that you can quickly draw it to the attention of the editor. Um, I'll also add a uh, column just to notate the print takes and track them as well. And I will, of course, normally have a whole slew of metadata that I led through here, like shoot day, uh, the split that these uh, clips were from of the day, camera, all that jazz. Um, but I'm not going to get you too bogged down on metadata right now. I'll save that for another day. For now, let's just jump over to frame view and we'll see what we're going to do. So you'll notice here I've got a whole bunch of clips in my bin. Now these can be occasionally jumbled up depending on how you've got them. So before we proceed, just make sure you've got them sorted chronologically by name. Um, and then when you come back over to frame view, you're just going to go to the fast menu up here and you're going to select align and fill, fill sorted. And this can also be accessed by a right click and you know, empty space in the bin or a couple of different places really. Now, also, just so as you know, if you are using an older version of Avid, like 2018 or earlier, that fast menu will be down here in the bottom left corner as opposed to the top right. Right, now, next thing I'm going to do is just make these thumbnails a bit bigger, easier to read, and I'm going to do that by holding down my command key and tapping L to enlarge. Usually I'll do this until I get to the largest setting and then go back a couple with command K to go back, just so that we can fit as much as we can in one, you know, window without having to scroll around the bin too much. And then once I've done that, I'll go back to my menus and just run the uh, fill sorted command again, because this is probably a better time to do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all these and just arrange them in one row per camera setup. So move these down, uh, the first one's on its own, and then I'll grab all of the A's put them here, and then go through and quickly do the rest. And then once I've got them all really roughly placed, I'll just hit Command T to snap them to a grid. Now, if you have seen my video on the 14 best features of the new Avid, you'll know that up in the fast menu, you can get more granular and better control over this uh, invisible grid that you're snapping to and actually make it visible. Um, so just bear in mind that option is there as well if you prefer to do it that way or if you just need to nudge one clip back. Right, now that I've got my clean rows per camera set up, uh, you'll notice that another thing we have here is A and B angles for each different take. Now if I've got A and B angles then one thing I'm probably going to want to do is make a multicam group clips. 
or maybe you won't. Uh, if you're assisting this, then uh, just check with your editor first, because I know some editors don't like them. The one I'm working for currently actually doesn't like group clips at all. Hates them. But for the purposes of this video and example, we're going to use it. So first things first is I'm just going to reorganize my bin a bit here so I've got some space under each camera setup row because that's where I'm going to place my groups once I've made them. Right, now let's make a group out of Alpha Take 1. So I'll select them both and I'm going to do a Command Shift G to bring up my group clips options. Now you can make your group with endpoints or source time code but I prefer to use waveform analysis because this is going to be using the sound, which is probably going to be the commonality between the two takes. So uh, it tends to be a very accurate go-to way to do this quickly and reliably. So after that, I'll just uh, tidy my bin up a little bit, and then I'll, I'll go through and I'll do the same, creating a group clip for every multicam pair that is in the sequence. Right, now as you can see as I scroll up and down the bin that I now have a group clip um, to match every multicam player right beneath them, nice and tidy. Now of course you would check with your editor how they would like this arranged, I've seen a bunch of different ways, so uh, I've seen some editors that like uh, a row of all the A cam, then a row for all the B, and then a row of the groups. Um, but uh, this is just one way, and in fact the very first editor I've assisted for this was how he liked his bins laid out. Shout out to Eric DuBose in New Zealand, really awesome editor. Right now you'll also notice that in the first take of the Delta setup, I've put these two overlapped and not grouped it. This is because it was a no good take that barely made it past the slate, didn't really even do action. Um, but I'd like to include it there just to make that clear to the editor in case it's not in the notes and just so as they know because nothing's ever fully NG, there might be something that they want to use. So. Uh, just as a habit, I, I would keep that in the bin. Right, now the uh, next thing I'm going to do here is just tidy up the naming a bit because I don't particularly love the dot .group.01 dot thing. Um, so I'm just going to go jump back to text view and clean this up using a find and replace. And this is a really, really amazing uh, feature in the modern avids that will allow me to really, really quickly uh, fix this up and uh, clean anything that I don't want out of the file names. Sweet! Uh, that's a lot tidier. Now the whole uh, uh, brackets A, brackets B thing, I, I don't particularly love either. I downloaded these clips off edit stock for making this uh, video. Um, so I'm just going to uh, change that up uh, using find the replace as well, just to make it a bit nicer. Boom, there we go, that's better. Just one more thing though you may have noticed, is quite obvious that a lot of these frames, they are still looking at the slate, they're looking at the first frame. And uh, that, that's no good, you're kind of losing the whole advantage of this uh, visual frame view. So I'm going to fix all that right now. And I'm going to start by going through these clips one by one and just really quickly throwing on an endpoint at uh, any random frame that just uh, represents the action. Something you could use as a thumbnail. This is something that I'll almost always leave to a macro key that I've made just for this occasion. Right, now that I've got my endpoints all set at a fairly usable frame, um, all I need to do now is do a command A to select all my clips and then simply hit the Q key and voila, there we go. Useful frames all around. Well, almost all around, that's weird. Now I do also want to mention that this isn't a new feature, it's been in Avid for as long as I've ever been using it actually. Um, but a lot of assistants and editors don't seem to know about it because they always seem surprised when I show them. So, so spread the word and make sure people know there's a better way to make your thumbnails than just using the J, K and L keys to scrub through the clips right inside the bin. 
And right, there we go. That is uh, more or less this first option complete. We have uh, useful frames that we can visually see. We've got our group clips and uh, naming's all nice and tidy. So that's a very usable and nice and neat scene bin. The only last thing I would add is to load up your groups and just throw on a, a marker on the action point or and any second actions uh, anytime there's a, a new action call and just make sure to match frame to both angles and apply that to the sources as well in case they use that. Um, and this is something that I'll do regardless of how I'm making the scene bin, just whenever I'm prepping ruptures. Um, it's very popular with editors because uh, it helps them jump to the, straight to the take. But uh, that's enough of this one, so why don't we move on to our second option where we're going to jazz this up with some colour. So for this Ben layout you'll see we'll start with more or less where we left off with the last one, uh, but we're just going to add some colour and logic things to um, just as another way to visually track. The reason why I've made this as a separate option as opposed to just a footnote on the first one is just because I've met so many editors that uh, really don't like using clip colouring. I personally love it, but you know, they're allowed to have their own opinion. <coughs> Be wrong. So if we switch back over to text view, um, this is where we can uh, apply colours to our clips as I'm sure you know. And there's a whole bunch of different logic here, you know, you can apply just uh, some colour just to the print takes. Some people like to do every single camera setup a different colour. I personally like to have a colour system on a per scene basis. So for this one we're going to colour uh, the whole scene blue to start with. But I'm going to select all of my print takes and just make them a slightly lighter shade of blue to distinguish them a bit further. So then once we're back in frame view, you can see that we can visually see all of our clips, the scenes colouring, as well as easily point out the print takes. So for here it's take two, um, for the last setup it's also take two, and for uh, alpha it's also take two. And this just helps us to get even more information across in a very easy visual way. Now it should be noted that in order to see this in the bin, you're going to have to go into your settings and uh, turn this on. So once you're in your user settings, just navigate to bin, and then once you're in there, you'll see the option for frame view just in the bottom right corner. So just tick show border colors and use clip color because this is not on by default. Right, now for our next option, we're just gonna stay in the text view. I've met quite a few editors who only ever like to stay in the text view, including my editor I'm currently working with. Um, he only likes to have three columns, with the main one being his comments column, and the comments notes that he writes is how he identifies clips, and that's what works for him. But a bin with only three columns wouldn't be the most exciting to show for this video, so what I'm going to do instead is just show you how you can make a reels with all of your footage, which is a really great way for being able to browse all of the footage in a bin, and uh, quickly edit from it without having to select clips all the time. So let's uh, get started by just creating a sequence and I'll just uh, name this one scene 02 brushes and then we're going to just select all of our takes and uh, wherever we have a group clip I'm just going to ignore the two source angles and just select the group and anyway, I'm just going to select all these make sure that the markers are cleared and then I'm going to drop them onto our newly created sequence. And then you'll end up with a sequence that looks a bit like this. And then it should be fairly easy with your action markers to go through and just edit out all of the uh, footage before the action call and after cut. So we're just removing anything that's not script acting here. Now by all means if you see something that's useful, leave it in. Um, but this will just make browsing this timeline a lot nicer experience. As like you can see, you'll end up with a timeline that's just all of the action acting usable footage for that particular scene. Now if it was me, I would also load some filler and just throw a, a little bit of black in between each uh, camera setup as well. Um, just helps me to visually distinguish between the different angles I have recorded. But that is us pretty much finished with this option. We end up with a sequence that contains all of our usable footage. And the best thing is we just throw this into our source monitor 
and then we could just edit straight from this sequence. Just uh, make sure that uh, toggle source record in the timeline is mapped to a key, and then you can flick back and forth and edit with that. You don't have to go always selecting clips and looking for clips. Nice and easy. In fact, my uh, favorite way to work when I'm cutting is actually a spin on uh, this. Right, now the last of our four general options is just to take a quick look at Avid's uh, script view in the bin. So this is a best of both type option where we can see thumbnails and we can also see all of our metadata and we get a very wide uh, entry for uh, putting in comments about uh, clips as I am very crudely demonstrating it in this recording here. Now, I've never personally used this for cutting, but I can see the logic of how this could be uh, really useful for people, particularly if you're really used to having all of your data there and available to you, but you're also kind of jealous of those folk using frame view and you want that visual indicator as well. This could be a good solution for people like that. Right, now, as promised, let's take a quick look at how I would like to have a bin laid out. Um, and as I also mentioned earlier, it is also using reels, with the difference being that I like to have uh, one reel for a master with all of the footage, and then also another for each character in the scene with just their footage. So I just think who I want to cut to, throw their reel into the source monitor, and then I can go looking for, see what my options are, and as I scrub through the character's timeline, I'll, I'll just get a feel for what shot I should use for the cut. So here I'll show you some examples. This one is a Remo Zoe. It's a couple of characters but they're always together in the scene so they've got their own reel. And as I scrub through it you'll see that the sequence just has all of their coverage. You'll also notice that I've laid down all the groups uh, twice and so there's one instance for each uh, camera angle as well as each clip but I do also like the groups there so I can switch between them and have that option to use later on down the line. Now there's an evolving camera setup that's snuck through here so there's some footage of someone else so before I start cutting with this reel I would just uh, trim them out of it. Now I'll show you a cleaner example here just with this uh, princess reel and all that actually includes is the wide shot because that's got everybody in it and uh, princess is single because that's all the coverage of the scene that has princess. So I just find this a really useful way of cutting um, because all I need to do is uh, once I've got my reels tidied up is keep track of the characters and who's in the scene and who I want to cut to next. I don't have to remember slate letters or god forbid in the British slating system the the number of the setup. Characters are just a whole lot easier to track and they're something that we're probably familiar with from the script and watching the rushes at this point anyway. Right guys, so that was a look at five different ways that you can lay out a scene bin in Avid. There are many more, I've seen a whole bunch of different variations on this and I could have been here all day talking about this, but I know that I do have a tendency to paddle on so trying to keep these videos shorter now. Hopefully there was something in there that um, you found interesting or a different take on, you know, maybe how you like to lay out your scene bins. I don't know. I'm just trying to be optimistic here that, uh, you know, there's a point to making these videos. As always, if you had any questions of anything that was in the video, if there's anything else that you want me to cover or take a look at, if there's something you have that you don't get or you're trying to see if there's a way to do something and do another NLE, drop me a comment and I'll happily do a video or message you directly and see if there's a way that we can get it sorted and help you out.